Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. And I'm now answering a question on, on the request of one of the students on the channel from um, the Cambridge IGCSE Rayner Extended um, Maths Book. And this question is from Chapter 8, which is about sets, vectors, functions, and transformations. This is from the part about vector geometry on page 304, exercise 10, question 10. I've already answered a few questions from this particular exercise. Um, um, now, this is question number 10. It says, the vector from O to A is denoted by A, as shown in this diagram. And the vector from O to B is equal to the vector B, as shown in this diagram. So vectors can be re represented by a single letter, which is normally lowercase, or it can be represented by um, you know, a line directed line between two points, a line segment between two points with an arrow. Okay, so O to A, that's the vector that takes you from the point O to the point A. And the vector from the point O to the point B, so the vector O to A is A and the vector O to B is B. So they're asking us to express what the vector from B to A is, from B to A is, in terms of the vectors A and B. Now, If I want to go from B to A and I want to use the vectors that I already know, I can go from B to O and then from O to A. Okay, so I can go from, I know that the vector from B to A is the same as going from, starting from B and then going to O. And then if I add to that the vector from O to A, that will take me from B to O and then from O to A, which is basically taking us from B to A in the end. In the end, you'll end up going from B to A. So B to O is, is the same, it's parallel to the vector B, the same length as vector B, but in the opposite direction. Okay, so it's not going to be B, it's going to be negative B. Okay, vectors which are negative of each other are parallel but in opposite directions. And then O to A is exactly the same as vector A. It's the same length and the same direction, so that would be plus A. So that's the answer to part A. To make it neater, you could write it as A minus B. It's the same thing, the vector A minus B. So if you started at, at, at B, you go the vector A, and then minus B, you'll end up at A. Okay? or you go minus b plus a, you'll also end up at a. They're the same vector. All right, so that's the vector from b to a. Okay, so I'm going to write that result here in case we need it. So we know the vector from b to a is equal to a minus b. In these vector questions, it's quite common that you will be um, basically um, using previous results from different parts or earlier parts of the question in subsequent parts. That's quite a common thing. So here we've got... The, the answer from part A, B to A, is the vector from B to A is A minus B. Then it says, given that B to X is M times B to A, M is some scalar, uh, you know, it's like constant, basically some, we, obviously, towards the end, I think we'll have to find the value of it. It says, given that B to X, B to X is some um, fraction of the vector B to A, something times b to a, show that o to x is m a plus 1 minus m b. Okay, so let's, how do we deal with this? Let's see, let's deal with this in the same kind of way. We say b to x is the same as going from b to o again. We can go from b to o and then from o to x. So we go from b to o and then from o to x. Okay, so we know that b to, b to x is b to o plus b to x. Uh, we want to find what o to x is. Okay, in fact, we don't need to do this. We need to look at O to X. Let's look at O to X, that's better. If we, look, if we look at O to X, that's what we have to express in the end. We can say that's going from O to B, and then from B to X. That's what we have to find in the end. O to B plus B to X. Now we know what O to B is. We know O to B, as we're told, is a vector B. And we know B to X, well, they've told us b to x is some constant times b to a. Okay, as they've told us, m times b to a. And we know b to a. So we can just write this down as o to b is the vector b. And m times b to a is m times b to a, which is a minus b. Now, we want to express it in this form where the a and b components have been split out, split, uh, separated out. Okay, so how do we express it in this form? Well, what we need to do is expand this bracket so we can free the B term and the A term. So we have M times A, 
minus m times b, just expanding this bracket. And now we can express it how they want us to express it. Uh, we can put the ma first, and then we've got b minus m times b. So we've kind of like gathered the b terms together. And now what we can do is we can write this uh, by taking out b as common here. You have ma, that's fine on its own, plus, and what I can do is I can say, if I take m as common, I'll have a bracket here, which is 1, sorry, if I take b as common, not m as common, m is not common, take b as common here, then I have 1 minus m. b is a common factor in these two, I write that outside the bracket, and I'm inside the bracket, I've got 1 minus m. If I expand that, I'll have b minus bm and plus ma, which is exactly what we had here. So we have b minus bm plus ma, and that becomes this when we take out b as common factor. And that's what we had to show exactly the same as this. So there's the answer to part b. Then it says, part c says, given that o to p is 4a and p to q is 2b, express o to q in terms of a and b. So we know o to p is 2a, 4a, sorry. So from there to there is 4a. Um, and p to q is 2 times b. Express o to q. Well, that's pretty simple. From o to q. I want to go from O to Q, I've got to go from I've got to go from O to P and then from P to Q. And that's going to give me O to P, which they've already told us is 4A, and P to Q they've already told us is 2B. Simple as that. There's the answer to part C. Okay, very simple. Now for part D. Okay, so we know that um, O to Q. O to Q is 4A plus 2B. Okay, and we know that um, O to X, as we uh, were told here, is MA plus 1 minus M times B. 1 minus M times B. Okay, so th those are the results that we have. It says, given that O to X is equal to N times O to Q, use the results for O to X and O to Q to find the values of M and N. So we know O to X is M A plus 1 minus M times the vector B, and that's equal to N times O to Q, so it's N times 4A plus 2B. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to expand this um, just to get rid of that bracket. Not this, this is already as I want it. I've got A and B components as I want them, and I've got 4 times NA plus 2 times NB. Now, to solve this type of question here, what we need to do is to compare the coefficients of the A and B components. Okay, why? Because if these two vectors are the same, then the A components must be identical, and their B components must also be identical because these are equal to each other, all right? So if I compare the A components, I know that M is the same as 4N, all right? And if I compare the B components, if I compare the Bs, I know that 1 minus M is the same as 2N. So what I end up here is with a pair of simultaneous equations, which I can solve by... I can do elimination and I can do substitution. I think substitution will be way easier here because all I need to do is to replace this M with 4N and I can solve for N and then solve for M afterwards. So if I substitute, let's call this equation 1 and equation 2. If I substitute equation 1 into equation 2, then I have 1 minus M equals 2 times, um, oh, sorry, I'll, I'll replace the, the, the M with 4N. So I'll have 1 minus, instead of having 1 minus M equals 2N, I'll have 1 minus 4N equals 2N. Okay, because I've just substituted instead of this M, I've substituted 4N. So I have 1 equals 6N, add 4N to both sides. So 1 over 6 equals N, so N equals 1 sixth. So there's the answer for N. And we know that m is equal to 4n, so therefore m is equal to 4 times 1 over 6, which is, they cancel out, you've got 2 over 3. So we have m equals 2 thirds. So there's the answer to the last part of this question, and that solves this question here. So these type of questions are all very, very similar, 
And this particular question, you know, in the end, you end up with an expression for OX that we found, expression for OQ that we found in early part of the question. And they've told us that these two are equal to each other. So to find the values of M and N, we have to just basically always follow the step of separating the A and the B components, the separate vector components. And then we have to basically uh, compare the coefficients of those components. And then we find, um, you know, our answer normally by some sort of simultaneous equations. Okay, so that concludes this question. I hope that was clear. Um, other questions from this particular exercise and from this particular topic of vectors um, from the text can be found in the playlist that will appear somewhere in this region here. Other questions from vector geometry in general of uh, from IGCSE, um, Cambridge papers can be found in this playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Um, other material you might, might want to see from um, my work you can find in the description and, and description of the video. You'll find some links there to that. Thank you for watching and see you soon.